you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brahma018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another FIFA 21 Tactics video. This is a series where I show you how to recreate and adapt real systems so that they all work in FIFA 21. Thanks for joining me if you are today, and today we're going to be looking at uh, Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid system. Now, I have already covered the 4-4-2, the system that he has been you know, renowned for uh, since becoming Atletico Madrid manager all those years ago. Today, we're going to be um, really shifting our focus onto the 3-5-2 slash 5-3-2 that he has really implemented this season. Um, now they've they've rotated a lot. They've um, you know moved between different formations and systems across the course of the season. They've still played the four four two in times. Um, they've played like a like a, a five two three or a three four three um, as well. They've really shifted between formations. But the one I want to focus on is this sort of three five two five three two esque um, system. We saw of the two front men. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. It's had quite a few suggestions, um, so I hope you um, hope you guys enjoy it. And what I will say is, sort of basic first words and, and summing up the system in terms of the gameplay. I really enjoy playing with it, to be honest. You know, I, I really enjoy playing with the systems on this game where you know they are quite defensive. They look to counter on teams. Um, you know, it's based around shape and um, you know being solid and stuff. You know, I do enjoy playing with them. Um, you know, and I enjoyed it in the uh, in the gameplay you see on the right hand side as well. When when the gameplay isn't trying to screw you over, um, which is often, um, you know, you can really get some enjoyment out of this tactic. So um, you know, that's a, it's certainly one that I think you know a lot of you guys are, are going to enjoy as well. In terms of tips on on playing it and stuff, you know, I'd say just just the basics. What what you guys already know, you know, keep your shape. Don't rush out at people. Jockey them instead. Um, you know, don't be um, too gung ho sort of thing. Uh, pick your chances, pick your passes, pick your moments. Don't be afraid to, to go direct and to, to play balls in behind. Don't have to work it up the pitch all the time, as you'll see, um, you know, throughout the gameplay. So, um, so yeah, you know, um, just a really the basic tip. So, first off, what we do in these videos, if you're new, uh, I'll show you any position changes that we might have, which we do have one or two here. And then we go through the tactics, uh, and I'll show you all them, explaining them along the way. And then we finish off with the player instructions. And what I do is, on the right-hand side, I will suggest suitable players for you to sign if you are playing uh, career mode as well, just to sort of replicate that role as, as best as you can. So uh, that's what we do. So first off, with the formation, obviously we go with this um, 3 one 4 2. And we have both of these. Um, what the most important thing I should probably say is we have both of these as um, right mid and left mid as in the two wing backs rather than at wing back and and I spoke about this in, a, in another video recently when we covered Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea system is uh, what we said is basically if you're if you've got wing backs and you're playing them as right and left midfield some people might worry that you know they're going to play as actual midfielders or wingers and they're not going to play as wing backs they're not going to bed into the back line well what the game does a really good job of doing actually um, is when you have it on the instructions to come back on defense which we'll talk about shortly is they will then bed back into that back line and it's really really handy so they'll still play as full backs when out of possession but it means that they're going to get further forward as well which is really really handy particularly when you know they're the only they're the only players on that side you've got no wingers to pair up with them so that's really really helpful other than that, um, as you can see, you've got the defensive midfielder here. Make sure he is a defensive midfielder, the one, and the other two play the role as a central midfielders. And we're able to get that good, nice balance. Uh, other than that, though, no position changes, so we can move on to the tactics. So, defensively, now, obviously, drop back. You know, we all know what, what Atletico are like, what Simeone is like, you know. They get into their block. Um, they defend really well, really resolutely. And it's all about keeping the clean sheet and, and snatching winners, you know. And that's what we, we do here. We have that drop back. And it gives you as much re re defensive reinforcements as possible. And you can couple that in with the width as well. We've got this on three. Again, they don't want teams playing through them. They want teams to go around them um, and, you know, be forced to, to end up on the wings and try and whip crosses into the box. Well, you know, you're crossing balls into uh, Jimenez, Savic, um, Hermoso. They're, those guys, you know, that's chalk and cheese to them, isn't it? They'll, they'll eat them up all day. 
Um, so, you know, that's what they want. And that's why they have a narrow width here with three to try and force teams to uh, to go around them. Moving on to the depth next, we have this on four rather than three. And that's because with the change of the um, slightly more possession orientated formation, to the 352 you've seen that they've they, they don't defend so much in a low block as they do it's more of a mid block um now obviously that changes depending on the team but i did stick with the four when we played real madrid in the gameplay on the side and you'll see that you know it does it, it works out fine you're not getting balls played in behind just allows them to to um you know to be a little bit less passive in the game overall um, which does help when you're trying to instigate counter-attacks and stuff so we have that on four and you've got that nice mid block balance there moving on to offensively as i said um they've switched to a more possession orientated system you know they have to take the game to teams more it's something that's sort of cost them in the league and, and in games in general in the past is that they've not been able to sort of take games while the scruff of the neck command it instead they've ended up drawing nil nil a lot of times particularly with the addition of suarez um what they've had to do is they've had to be a little bit more possession orientated so you've got suarez and felix up top um you know that that system complements them so we go with possession and how we can um you know sort of if affect the game in terms of trying to break on teams and still have that counter-attacking threat is that we have the likes of Suarez on getting behind, um, which we'll talk about in the instructions. We have the likes of the wing-backs as well doing the same. Felix, you can give and go. Same with Lamar as well. So we have that sort of nice balance between a possession system and a counter-attacking system, depending on what situations arise. With the width, we move this up to seven. And obviously... The reason why we don't go into the top three, which is when it comes really wide, is because you just don't want too much space in between all of your players because then it's going to be a lot easier for the opposition to intercept um, you know, any longer passes. But you also have to remember that uh, this team are built around trying to get balls wide and get them into the box. You know, you've got the likes of Kieran Trippier, Yannick Carrasco on either side, very good at crossing balls into the box, particularly Trippier. So you want to try and... Uh, utilize that as much as possible so with a higher width you can get them you know creating more space and um you know you you, you attack it from uh, from that way players in the box we have this up to six that means there'll be three in the box and it's roughly about that really because obviously you've generally got the two strikers in there and then maybe a central midfielder storms into the box as well sometimes a right um or a fullback should i say um will get into the box but it's generally free the hallmark of a simeone system don't commit too many men. You know, you have to make sure that you are ready for any opposition counter-attack that may spawn as a result of a failed attack for yourself. So you don't want too much men uh, committing and getting forward into the box. Uh, onto corners and free kicks, like we always do in these videos. And I don't think it's ever going to change. We move it up to four. So that you've got two men back, which is enough to deal with an enemy opposition counter-attack. Because they only leave one man forward. But then you have an extra man or two in the box as well. Just to give you um, a little bit of extra threat uh, from those set-piece situations. So that's it for the tactics then. We can now move on to the player instructions. As mentioned before, we will suggest suitable players on the right-hand side for you to sign um, as we work our way through. So starting off with the keeper, we have Jan Oblak here, of course. Um, comes to crosses naturally just to help you on those sort of crossing situations because keepers are, are overly protective. But with saving outside the box, we've got this on balanced. Not only does it replicate his role, you rarely see him coming out. The reason for that is, is that they're playing you know um a lower defensive line so there shouldn't be a lot of balls um coming over the top and coming in getting in behind for the goalkeeper ha to have to deal with that so you can manually just bring him out when you need to by holding y or triangle um but you know you should rarely have to do that considering um you know the the sort of position of your defensive line with the three centre-backs, keep it exactly the same. No need to change attack and support or interceptions, of course. What I will say is it's quite important here that you do have um, sort of players who are, are on the right side for their foot. So, for example, Hermoso is left-footed. He's on the left side. Savage is right-footed. He's on the right side. Ideally, I would like to swap Savage for someone a little bit more pacey because you just have to deal with the fact that the game is based around pace. And when you've got the right-sided centre-back who's quite slow like Savage, it doesn't really help. Hermoso, on the other hand, on the other hand is quite pacey, you know, so, the, so that does help. Um, it also helps. The reason why I suggest... 
sort of having the strong sided player is because when you're trying to play counter attacks it might fall to one of your right or left sided centre back in which case you're going to have to play a through ball maybe direct 30, 40, 50 yards down that side um, into the path of one of the forwards perhaps who's running in behind you want them on their stronger foot so that they can play that pass more effectively so that's just something for you to uh, to bear in mind uh, moving on to the wing backs now or we should say wide midfielders in this situation we have Carrasco and Trippier here and they both have the exact same role. So first off, come back on defence. As we mentioned earlier, obviously, they will embed in to the back five um, because you've got no fullbacks behind them. Uh, and then with chance creation, we have them both stay wide as well. Obviously, they're the ones creating the whip here. You want them in as much space out wide, pretty much on the touchline, um, if possible, because then they can get them into the best crossing positions you can. And that's how um, you know, you're really looking to, to utilise their strengths. But then with support runs, we have these on getting behind. And so it just enables you to have a little bit of penetration on the counter-attack when you need to. Also getting into, into space so that they can you know, cross the ball or, or lay it off, etc. It's the same with both of them, as I mentioned. Um, and, and like I say, that just allows you to be a little bit more active um, and have that sort of emphasis on the counter-attack when you need to as well. Because they'll make runs in behind um, you know, when they need to. Uh, with support on crosses, we have this on balanced. Like I say, they will occasionally get into the box for a cross, um, depending on the situation. Again, you only want three roughly in the box. So um, this is why we keep this on balance, because you don't want them always storming into the box in those crossing situations and leaving so much space um, in behind. So that's really it for the back line. Uh, moving on to the midfield now, we'll start off with Koke, who's obviously taken this more holding role in, in recent times. He's playing as the uh, defensive midfielder. With the defensive behaviour, we have this on cut passing lanes. Now, um, a sort of hallmark of, of Atletico Madrid is sort of shaved. They don't really go man-to-man -man, um, until it gets into those box situations. When you're playing further up the field, or when the opposition are, are deeper in their in their half or in the mid the mid section, really it's about keeping their shape. You know, not let not giving too much away, playing it safe. So as a result, um, you know, you really want lanes rather than um, you know a, a man marking system. It's only really when they get into the the opposition, get into the box, and then the defenders will start picking up men. Um, that's when they're really looking to do it. But otherwise, cut passing lanes. And with attacking support, stay back while attacking. He's essentially turned into a pivot. You know, I personally would prefer him in one of these two forward roles you know Lamar where Lamar or, or Lorente are because you know I think he's he's got that in his locker I think he can be a fantastic boxer box midfielder he can do all sorts he can be that more advanced playmaker he can do a whole range of different things he can also play this role so it's no problem at all but I think had they have kept Thomas Partey you know it would have been him and he would have been further at the field in um, into one of those more advanced central midfield positions with defensive position, we have this on cover centre. That's a very, very important. You want Lorente and Lamar, the ones covering the wing. You've also got a right and left-sided centre-back as well. He stays as that central figure, and he shouldn't really be moving too much from that situation, only um, you know when you manually need to do it. Uh, moving on to Lorente and Lamar next. Now, we've got two slightly different varying instructions here. And the reason being is that what you'll find is that when Atleti attack is that one central midfielder will often go forward and the other one will will hold, you know, and he'll provide that protection. Now, obviously, on FIFA, you, you're limited in terms of tactics. You can't get both. You're storming. You, you can't rotate between both, you know. when If you've got them both to go forward, they'll both end up going forward. So you need to set one uh, prior um, and you can have you can only have one or the other. So what we do here is we actually have Lorente on stay on the edge of the box and uh, balanced attack. And the reason being is that he's on the same side as Suarez. And Suarez is going to be on getting behind. So therefore, you don't want them both getting in behind and then being left in the lurch. On the other side though, Yao Felix will be a false nine and he'll be dropping off into those spaces. And picking up the ball from deeper positions. Therefore, with Lamar getting forward more and running in behind more and getting into the box more, you've got a little bit of protection on that side as well. So it's all nicely worked out to, to complement um, as much parts of the pieces of the puzzle 
uh, as as possible. So yeah, Lamar is on get forward and get into box for crosses, whereas uh, Marcus Lorente is on balance attack and stay on the edge of the box across. That's very, very important just to try and keep that defensive solidity and that balance as much as you possibly can. So with the two forwards, obviously we've just mentioned it. We'll go into more detail on them now. We'll start off with Yar Felix. Yes, of course, he's a false nine. and he's picking up those deeper positions. You want to get him onto the ball as much as possible, driving forward, running at players, um, you know, laying it off if and when he can. Maybe there's an overlapping Carrasco, etc., and then with support runs, you want to want drift wide as well. Because obviously with only um, one wide man on each side, the two wing backs, you know, you're going to be left a little bit vacant. So with him on drift wide, um, you know, he'll pick up those half spaces on uh, in the wide areas sometimes. And it just gives you a little bit extra support um, in, those, um, in those situations. With defensive support, we have him on comeback on defense as well. Um, we'll have that with the same of with Suarez as well because that is just just the way they do things they make sure it's 11 men behind the ball and then when they attack you know they attack uh, moving on to Suarez uh, so with support runs we actually have this on balanced so obviously occasionally he'll come out wide when he needs to again but really you see him as the focal point um of the attack you know the final man the number nine and that's how he gets so many goals is that he's generally going to be in between the posts um you know, picking up those those final balls. Obviously, we have him on getting behind, as we already spoke about. Um, and then we also have him on comeback on defence as well. Like I say, you want as much men defending as possible um, because then it just gives you as much solidity as you possibly can, really. And with 11 men behind the ball, you're going to be a lot harder to break down. Um, and that's what gives you that extra, uh, extra security, really. So, you know, all in all, it's a tactic where everyone's complimenting everyone else um, and it's really made to, to work in conjunction uh, with each other uh, and be as solid as possible so one that i really really enjoy i hope you guys enjoy it too let me know in the comment section if you enjoy playing with it if you have any questions about the tactic then again get at me and i'll do my best to get back to you i try and answer as many comments as i possibly uh, can do check out my second channel if you haven't done so already, Bromma Ball. The link to that is in the description where we discuss real football. Got a lot of plans for that ahead, so uh, do go and subscribe to that as well. And give me a follow on Twitter if you haven't done so already. The link to that is in the description. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload a new video. And I know we are going to finish it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.